Most of you have probably heard of me already. I'm fairly notorious in the healing community. My name is Galina Kraskova. I am a devotee of Odin, a go to Theo, a priest, and a Northern Tradition Shaman. I hold a Master's in Religious Studies from New York University. I'm currently pursuing a second Master's in Classics. I want to be able to read those old texts in the original when they're talking about our gods. And I have a Diploma in Interfaith Ministry. I have been doing this work since 1991 in one form or another. My primary focus right now is not only teaching about engaged spirituality and devotional work, but also teaching about the importance of returning to our returning to an awareness of our own indigene. I just think but I think it's so incredibly sad that so many people of northern European stock or of European stock don't realize that you know what you had indigenous practices too. They were just taken from us an awful long time ago. All of us at some point come from the tribal mind. You go back far enough, Northern Europeans had tribes, they had indigenous communities, and I think one of the saddest things about our contemporary culture is that we are so disconnected from that, we don't even realize it. I've had people say to me, white people, I've had white people say to me who were practicing pagans, I'm white, I, I, don't, I don't have any right to indigene. What, did E.T. drop you off on a flyby? You absolutely have a right to reclaim your indigenous practices and the world would be better for it if you did. At one time, if we go back far enough, every single person on this planet, including those of us who came from northern European roots, had indigenous traditions. They had traditions that were native to their people, their place, and their time that evolved organically from the engaged understanding of their ancestors. And with those indigenous ways came a certain worldview of connection and connectivity, a worldview that taught us how to properly engage with the ancestors, the spirits of the land, and our holy powers. These were our native ways. And then something happened. Then monotheism came. For those of us of Northern European extraction, it came in the form of Christianity, and it swept violently over our lands, and by force tore us away from our indigenous traditions. We were compelled to abandon those traditions. 4,500 Saxons laid down their lives rather than abandon their religious traditions. And you have to wonder why this was. They were polytheistic. They were animist. They did not go willingly into the darkness of monotheism. They fought, and in that battle, something very precious was lost when they died. 2,000 years of monotheistic dominance, and we live in a world that is still bearing the scars of colonialism, of genocide, and of a complete abrogation of personal spiritual responsibility. I believe that it is vitally important that we cast aside this filter tainted by monotheism, by the Protestant Reformation that sought to take the mystery out of religious engagement, by the Enlightenment, by the deification of scientific theory, by the pathologization of spiritual experience, of our of post-modernity and post-post-modernity and the way in which any type of devotional practice has become not only passé but suspicious. I say we need to cast all that aside. That if we want to bring balance and healing and health to our world, if we want to truly reconnect with our dead, reconnect with our holy powers and restore these traditions, we need to first reclaim our filter, our worldview, our headspace as indigenous people. I fully believe that the conquest and genocide of the Americas could not have happened if it had not first happened to us. The spread of monotheism across northern Europe was religious and cultural genocide.
The term genocide was actually coined in the early part of the 20th century by a scholar named Lemkin. And in his definition of genocide, he included the destruction of religious, cultural, and linguistic patterns of a community. When I use the term genocide, I'm not talking about the watered-down definitions that the UN has put into play. I'm talking about the original definition. It is not just the slaughter of a people. It is the slaughter of their culture, their religion, their language, and their way of interacting with the world. And our ancestors ate the poison, drank the Kool-Aid, and some weird sort of cultural Stockholm Syndrome, we absorbed that disease. And then we turned around and did it to someone else. Every time you call to your gods, every time, every single time you raise a glass of wine and pour it out in honor of your dead. Every single time you offer a prayer or offer an invocation, you are doing something revolutionary. You are taking one step forward in reclaiming our indigenous traditions, and this is vitally important work. Every single time you call to your gods or your dead or you consciously and mindfully honor the spirits of the land upon which you walk, you are doing something subversive to our governing order. Be subversive. Be subversive. Engage with this process with the conscious knowledge that you are doing something to dramatically change your world one offering at a time. And it's a process that we all need to be deeply engaged with. I'm not saying our ancestors were perfect. I've occasionally been accused of romanticizing the past. No, our ancestors screwed up every bit as often as we did. But they have something that we lack. And I think that what they had was that polytheism, was that animism, was that sense of connectedness to the powers. That's what we have been taught to smother. Yes, our ancestors had wars and they had conquest and they were violent, but you did not see the type of religiously based conquest that monotheism ushered in. You did not see that type of, you didn't see genocide. You didn't see the type of colonialism that monotheism brought. Now when I talk about reclaiming our indigenous ways and reclaiming the indigenous mind, reclaiming the pre-conquest mind, that is what we have to reclaim. We have to reclaim the pre-conquest mind, that which our ancestors were consciously and organically rooted in prior to the coming of monotheism prior to the conquest of monotheism. This idea did not start with me. There are activists like John Trudell, brilliant man, who are saying the same thing to their people. Pre-conquest mind, when I use that term, I mean that we need to learn to view the world and engage with the world and everyone and everything in it through the lens of our indigene. We need to completely change the way that we expect to engage with the gods and the ancestors and the world around us. We all are working with a filter. And the sad thing is that most of us don't even realize that this filter of monotheism and postmodernism and a thousand other things is there. We don't question. We're numb and dumb. We don't question the way that we've been taught to view the world. Julian the Martyr, whom the Christians call the apostate, talked about being corrupted by the filter that had been taught to him because he was raised Christian. How much more then, 1,500 years or so later, have we been indoctrinated? We start there and then try to build on that.
And I'm telling you that in order to truly reconnect with our traditions, in order to truly restore the religious traditions that were lost, we first need to address that filter and get rid of it. And when we can actually root out this mental disease, we need to root that out because it colors everything. It colors how we engage with the gods. It colors what we expect of our religious ritual. It colors where we make obstacles for ourselves and what we choose to disregard and what we choose to grant a certain normative authority. I'm heathen. I look at my religious community and we fetishize lore. We fetishize the written word in a way that our ancestors never would have. We fetishize the written word and we use it to block or limit personal experience. Now there are heathens that will tell you that engaging with lore is a way of opening up to personal experience and of honoring the ancestors. Maybe. But the results that I see in the community concern me deeply. Because I don't see the engagement I see an artificial structure coming from people who were raised in Protestant Christianity where the written word has the effect of sacred law. And that's not something our ancestors would have comprehended. What are you doing? What are you doing? You deify the written word. Go join a LARP. Go join a live action role play. You're certainly not actively engaging with your dead, and you're certainly not actively engaging with your ancestors. You're using lore and pretending that that's engagement. Because it's the only thing you know, because that is what you were raised to expect. And why were you raised to expect that? Because you live in a culture that is defined by the Protestant Reformation. And that Protestant Reformation is the brainchild of the monotheism that initially destroyed our traditions. Wake up, people. Wake up. Because our world is terribly out of balance. And terribly unhealthy. And terribly destructive to the people in it. And it's going to take both sides of the equation, living and dead, human and divine to bring about any type of healing. And it starts with reconnecting to our own indigene. It all starts with removing that filter and returning to our pre-conquest mind. Only then can any type of authentic reconstruction actually occur.